I know there's a DJ convention going on in Vegas starting this week. I won't be there this year, uh, just not involved. But it got me thinking about advancements for mobile DJs. What are the top 10 biggest advancements for me in my career? What are they? I made a list. And, you know, the stuff on this list isn't exactly when this stuff came out. It's when... I applied it to what I do, and it made a big difference. Now remember, I've been doing this since 1984. <laughs> Started in skating rinks, and then in the late 80s went on to doing mobiles and clubs and things, and here we are now, still doing it. So I've been doing it for a while. But yeah, if I think back, what are the things that were just, holy crap, this is changing everything? Number one, music video. I only did it in clubs. I think the first time I did it was 90 or 91. It had been around since like 83, 84. I saw it in skating rinks. I know it was happening in clubs. It was probably around even before that. But it was the first time that I ever did anything like music video, which was a hot medium back then. And we were using VHS tapes. And we were using Hi-Fi VCRs, two of them. And they had these little black and white TV monitors we didn't have a fancy video mixing console. We had an AB switch from Radio Shack that switched from one source to the next, and we were doing our audio with the mixing board. So we were doing two things at once to make this happen. I wasn't doing it all night. I was playing a lot of records too, playing a lot of CDs too. Which brings me to the next big advancement that just changed everything. When we went from records to CDs. This happened for me in probably, oh, I don't know, maybe 93 or so. And it's not like CDs weren't around. It's just that everything that I needed on CD wasn't available to me. I remember having this particular CD at one of the mobile companies that I worked for, and it was like a couple hundred bucks to get your hands on this thing. And it's got like happy birthday and the limbo on it. And I don't know, weird things that you might need for a wedding that you just couldn't find anywhere else on CD. They were bootlegs. I remember, I think it was in 94, I went to a DJ supply store, like a music store. And they had a collection of 10 of these things. It was big bucks, but I dropped money on them and I got them all. And from there, with the collection I already had that I was kind of building just in case, I worked at UCD stores. I bought everything when I could, just, just to have it ready to go when I was ready to go all CD. This kind of closed all the gaps, and I was able to go out and get rid of the records and just use CD players and CDs. This was huge. The next thing would be equipment that was specifically made for DJs. More equipment, to be more specific, I guess. When you think back, yeah. The mixing board with the crossfader, that was made for DJs. But that was really kind of about it. Everything else was stuff that was for install or for bands or something like that. The lighting was very heavy and it was expensive. Even simple things like aluminum tripods that lightened up the load. The tripods in the old days were like steel and they weighed a ton. Aluminum tripods weighed nothing for our light trees and such. That was great. ADJ, as far as I know, were the ones who came out with a lot of cool lighting control stuff, lighting stuff, that was specifically made for us. The co-founder of ADJ, Scott Davies, I know him. He's a good guy. He was a DJ. And most of the people that are there who are running the show at ADJ today were DJs. And they started on the ground floor. So... That was the first time that I ever saw anything like that. Everything up until that point was adapted. It was either consumer electronics we brought in to use and married it with pro gear that was actually made for, like I say, bands or install or something. Specific DJ equipment, that changed everything. Next was MP3. I remember, I think it was in about 98, was talking to an engineer friend of mine and he said, you know, someday, you're going to be able to just download songs off the internet. And maybe you'll even take a laptop out and play these songs at your events. 
thought, no, nah, dude, that's science fiction. That's never going to happen. I was doing it a couple of years later. Now, when MP3 first came out, I wasn't bringing a computer with me on the road. What I was doing was downloading tracks and burning them to CD to play in my CD players. And there was even a CD player that I bought a little later on that had the ability to play MP3 files off of a CD. So you could put 100 tracks on a CD or something ridiculous like that. 80 tracks, 70 tracks. I don't know what it was. It was a lot, kind of depending on what bit rate you used. But that was a big deal. You didn't have to necessarily go to the record store anymore to buy something. And you could find some hard to find stuff to download. Wasn't always legal, which we found out later, but it was a game changer for us. CDs to digital media. Oh, so we had MP3s, we were burning them on CDs, and then all of a sudden these software programs were coming out. You could actually DJ with your files. So if you had a computer that you could bring with you, you could just do all digital files. I remember for the first probably year that I decided to just use a computer at a gig to play music. I also brought CDs along because I didn't trust the tech. It was like training wheels. I never touched the CDs or the CD players. I did everything off of the computer because I'd, you know, built a comprehensive library in the computer. But I had the CDs there just in case. It was a problem. And eventually they went away, as well as the players. Because it really made things easier. You could have more stuff. It didn't weigh as much. You didn't have to worry about CD players. It was bizarre. But it was cool and it changed a lot about how I did things. LED lighting for DJs. Now we'll go back to ADJ for this. This is when I was first introduced to this stuff, probably in 2007, maybe? Wow. <laughs> Lightweight. Didn't suck a bunch of power from the wall. And if you wanted to do color washes on a dance floor, for instance, you didn't have to have a red par can and a blue par can and a green par can and a yellow par can. One par can would do all of those colors for you. That was amazing. I mean, that part alone was cool. The power consumption, like I mentioned, that was amazing. In the old days, and I've talked about this, whenever we would go do an event, we would try to get two different breakers, one for lights, one for sound, because our light shows alone consume so much power from those 250, 500 watt halogen bulbs that we'd pop a breaker, especially with the old school amplifiers and such. Didn't have to worry about that anymore. Everything could go into the same outlet because the lighting wasn't using any power. Mixing boards and controllers with built-in sound cards. Now, although we were using our laptops and some kind of program on the laptop to play our music, we usually had these external sound cards. Now, in the early days, I was using one that popped into a USB drive and I was also utilizing the headphone jack on the laptop itself. So I would use one for one side and one for the other. I'd key with one and play out with the other. That's how it worked. And then these mixing boards and controllers came out with this USB sound card built in that worked with our computers. We didn't have to have those sound cards anymore. It was a digital transfer from the laptop to the mixing board, lossless. Wow! And you know, the weird part about it is as I'm talking about this, I know that some of you out there are still doing it that way. I haven't done it that way, I don't know, since probably the 2010s after discovering built-in sound cards on mixing boards and controllers. Made everything sound better. Made it a lot easier. Now, I know powered speakers have been out for a long time, but the first time I used powered speakers was 2010. They were RCF Art Series 312As. Before that, I had 18-inch subwoofers, 15-inch tops, and I had this amp rack with two amplifiers in it. They had built-in crossovers. To me, that was amazing. I had stepped up to that. Before that, I had boat anchors, but I had these relatively lightweight digital crown amps, the D-Class amps, 
in a rack that I would carry around and it probably weighed I don't know I would guess 50 pounds but that was okay because that was better than the 120 pound amp rack I had before that going powered speakers the first time I took those out I remember looking at the load end of my truck and thinking to myself this is uncomfortable because I'm missing something I'm not used to not having an amp rack that is just wrong I've got to go through my checklist again and again and again it was crazy and then I set it all up I remember the first gig I took him out on it was an outdoor tent wedding and it was early I set up the sound and it sounded incredible I wasn't even running a subwoofer just the 12 inch tops and they sounded so nice and then I remember hearing this really nice 12 string guitar and thinking to myself I better go turn the music down it sounds like they have a musician for dinner they didn't tell me about I went up to the system and I realized that that guitar was coming out of the speakers. It was so crystal clear. I think a lot of people even today hesitate to go from passive to active systems. But man, let me tell you, I was sold on the first time out with them. And I haven't looked back since. Battery powered lighting with wireless control. You know how much time this saves? I mean, even before I became disabled, the thought of this was amazing. Before that, you had to have this hardware DMX board with some programs you put in it, and you had to run these DMX cables and daisy chain all your lights and figure out what that was going to look like, and it took time. It was crawling around on the floor. Battery powered. Don't get to plug them into the wall anymore. Wireless DMX, not to plug in DMX cables anymore. Wow, you mean you just turn them on and they're working? Whoa. That was science fiction, and I love it. I embrace it. I appreciate it today. Stuff I'm using now requires no wires. I'll never go back. Battery powered speakers. I'm thinking about doing these remote wedding receptions. I remember this one that I had to do. It was like in a cornfield or something. It was one of those barn venues that, I don't know, the farmer's granddaughter inherited the farm and she didn't really want to farm so she turned the barn into a wedding venue but they really don't know how to do anything hospitality wise because they've never worked in the hospitality industry you know what i'm talking about they had this area way out way way out i i i, I think it was 400 feet from the barn which is quite a ways i'd run extension cord from the barn to my system 400 feet of extension cord I don't recommend it. <laughs> don't do it. Battery powered speakers changed all of that. Oh my gosh. No problem. And in fact, battery powered anything ceremony. It's pretty amazing for those remote location events that you had to do. Yeah, it's just a matter of being creative and putting it together. But that was a huge game changer and made life a lot easier and made so many things more possible and practical that weren't before that and people pay for it which is pretty cool too and you know you think back on most of this stuff you know a lot of it wasn't really for DJs in the first place DJs were just kind of adapting things into what they did part consumer electronics part pro audio to make it happen today really it feels like it's pretty DJ specific or DJ friendly compared to how it used to be that's really cool what do you think? Let us know in the comments section. Just a Sunday video for you. I hope you enjoyed it. But let me know what your top 10 are. What your, Or maybe even just the one thing that just changed everything for you as a DJ. Made it easier. And is there something like that happening at that show this week? If there is, I definitely want to know about it. That's it. Take care. We'll see you soon. Practice and enjoy.